because this should be the prime module schema. In the section 15.22.2, we discussed how it cost the allocation in the approximate core of the gain can be computed by solving an LP and noted that for many commercial optimization games, this LP is equivalent to the due of the standard LP relaxation of uh, the problem with the cost of shares uh, correspond to the dual variables. In this section, we explain how techniques called the primal dual schema can be used to compute cost of shares that not only are in the approximate core of the game, but also satisfy the cross monotonicity property and hence can be used in the mechanism described in the previous section. The primordial schema is a standard technique in the field of approximation algorithms where the focus is on computing an approximately optimal primal solution and the dual variables, cost shares, are merely a byproduct of the algorithm. The idea of the primal dual schema, which is often used to solve the cost minimization problems, is to write the optimization problem as a mathematical program that can be relaxed into an LP. We refer to this LP as the primal LP. The dual of this LP gives a lower bound on the value of the optimal solution. For the problem, primal dual algorithms simultaneously construct a solution to the primal problem and its dual. This is generally done by initially setting all dual variables to zero and then gradually increasing these variables until some constraint in the dual program goes tight. This constraint hints at an object that can be paid for by the dual to be included in the primal solution. After this, the dual variables involved in the tight constraint are frozen and the algorithm continues by increasing the other two variables. The algorithm ends when a complete solution for the primal problem is constructed. The analysis is based on proving that the values of the constructed primal and dual solutions are close to each other and therefore they are both close to optimal. So we will elaborate on the two examples in this section. Submodular games is where a simple primal dual algorithm with no modification yields cross-monotonic cost shares in the facility location game, where extra care needs to be taken to obtain a cross-monotonic cost-sharing scheme. In the later case, we introduce a rather general technique of using ghost deduce to turn the standard primal dual algorithm for the problem into an algorithm that returns a cross-monotonic cost-sharing scheme. So 15.4.1 submodular games. Let us start with the definitions of submodular games. Definition 15.17. A cost sharing game AC is called a submodular game if uh, the cost function C satisfies that for all S and T which is subset equals to A, uh, the cost C of S plus the cost C of T is greater than equals to C of S union T plus the cost of C of S intersect T. The above uh, definition conditions is equivalent to the conditions of decreasing marginal cost, which says that for every two agents I and J, and every set of agents S, which is a subset of uh, the set A removed by, the small subset only contain two uh, agents I and J, the marginal costs of adding I to S that is, uh, C of S union the single term I minus C of S is no less than the marginal cost of adding I to S union the single term J. That is, uh, C of S union uh, the set IJ minus the C of S union the single term J. So recall that we always assume that C of uh, the phi. That means the infinite, infinite set is equal. Sorry, the empty set is equal to zero. So in many primordial algorithms, a post-processing step is required to bring the cost of the primal solution down. However, this step often does not change the cost shares. Submodular games, also known as uh, the concave games constitute an important classes of cost sharing games with many interesting properties. One example in this class is the modicast problem discussed in section 14.2.2 of this book. 
and consider a submodular game AC in the, the LPs 15.2 and 15.1 as the primal and the dual programs for this game, respectively. It is not hard to see that by submodularity of C, the solution of the primal program is always C of A giving a trivial optimal solution for this LP. However, the dual LP 15.1 is non-trivial and its optimal solutions correspond to cost allocations in the core of the game. Let alpha be a feasible solution of this LP. We say that a set S which is subset equals to A is tight. If uh, the corresponding inequality in the LP is tight, i.e. that if uh, the summations of all alpha J summing for index J in S is equal to C of S, and we need the following lemma to describe the algorithm. Lemma 15.18 Let alpha be a feasible solution of the linear program 15.1 if uh, two sets S1 and S2 which is a subset equals to A are tight. Then, so is uh, S1 union S2. So what's the proof? Uh, since alpha is feasible, we have that the summations of alpha J summing for all J which is in the intersection between S1 and S2, which is less than or equals to uh, the cost C of S1 intersect S2. So this together with uh, the submodularity of C and the tightness of S1 and S2 implies that the cost of S1 union S2 is less than or equals to the cost of S1 plus the cost of S2 minus the cost of S1 intersect X2. So by the definition of and also the modularity of C, the cost of S1 is less than or equals to the summations of alpha j summing for all j in S1 plus the summations of alpha j summing for all j in S2 minus the summations of alpha j summing for all j which is in S1 intersect S2. So which is by the definition is equals to the summations of alpha j summing for all j which is in S1 union S2. So therefore S1 union S2 is tight. Now the curl of 15.18 and uh, 19, there is a unique maximal tight set, and uh, it is simply the union of all the tight sets. We are now ready to state the algorithm that computes the cost shares. This algorithm is presented in figure 15.3. Notice that by lemma 15.18, when a new set goes tight, the new maximal tight set contains the old one, and therefore once an element i in t is included in the frozen set f, it will stay in this set until the end of the algorithm. Thus, the cost shear alpha j at the end of the algorithm is precisely the first time at which the element j is frozen. Furthermore, note that the algorithm never allows alpha to become an invisible solution of the LP 15.1 and stops only when the set t goes tight. Hence, the cost shares computed by the algorithm satisfy the budget balance and the core property. All that remains is to show that they also satisfy the cross-monotonicity property. Theorem 15.20 The cost sharing scheme defined by the algorithm a submodular cost share there will be in a figure 15.3 in the next slide is cross-monotone and proof is as follows Let T1 which is subset equals to T2 which is subset equals to A we uh, simultaneously run uh, the algorithm for T1 and the T2, and uh, call these two runs, the T1 run and uh, the T2 run. It is enough to show that, at any moment, the set of frozen elements in the T1 run is a subset of that of uh, the T2 run. Consider a time t, little t, i.e. the moment when all unfrozen cost shares in both runs are equal to t and let alpha to the l and fl denote the values of uh, the variables and uh, the frozen set at this moment in t1 run a uh, tl run for l equals to the index 1 or 2 that is t1 run or t2 run then we have something else before we see the analysis, let's look up the algorithm submodular cost share. 
Uh, the input is a submodular cost sharing gain, AC, and a set T, which is subset equals to A, of agents that receive the service. And uh, the output is the, the cost shares alpha J for every index J, which is in T. Now, uh, what's inside of the algorithm is that there is a full loop for every J initialized alpha J to zero. Uh, then we initialized let F equals to the empty set. Now there's a while loop. While T remove the set F is not empty, then we do the following procedure. Increase O alpha J for all those J in a T remove f at the same rate until a new set goes tight and we let f be the maximum tight set okay so this is uh, figure 52.3 about the algorithms for computing cost shears in a submodular game how to analyze um, the cases of uh, the t1 run and t2 run that we have uh, mentioned before uh, we can think of it as follows it's just a simple calculations of the cost function that is the c of f1 union f2 is less than equals to by the definitions of a submodularity is a C of F1 plus C of F2 minus C of F1 intersect F2, which is less than equals to. Here we substitute uh, the notations of upper to the L for those runs, which is less than equals to the summations of alpha i to the 1, summing for all i in F1, plus the summations of alpha i to the 2 summing for all i in F2 minus the summations of alpha i to the 1 where all i is in F1 intersect F2 so which means we want to remove those intersections between uh, those alpha i to the 1 and alpha i to the 2 so that means we do the summations for all uh, specified belongs to uh, non-overlapping element of uh, alpha i to the 1 summing for index i which is in f1 remove f2 plus the summations of of i to the 2 summing for all i which is in f2 which is less than equals to the summations of of i to 2 summing for i which is in f1 union f2 because we cut them into two pieces one is uh, for F1 remove F2, the other is for F2. So when we discuss about all the summations of F1 union F2, there might be some other causes that stretching the pond uh, between the uh, F1 remove F2 and also those inside of F2. So, okay. Now, after we discuss about the cost function analysis by the submodular cost chain games, the algorithms, where we know that the first inequality follows from a submodularity of C and the second follows from the tightness of FL with respect to, to alpha to the L where L is uh, equal to 1 or 2 and the feasibility of alpha to the 1 and uh, the last follows from the fact that every i which is in F1 remove F2 since i is in T1 which is subset of T2 and i is not frozen at time t in the T2 run we have that alpha i to the 2 is equal to t, which is greater than equals to alpha i to the 1. The above inequality implies that f1 union f2 is tied, respected to alpha to the 2, since uh, by definition f2 is the maximum tight set with respect to the alpha to the 2. We must have that f1 union f2 is equal to f2, hence f1 which is subset or equals to f2 as desired.